Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jennifer Tinklenberg, and I'm here with the Alzheimer's Association, and we are celebrating our National Volunteer Week. I've got some wonderful volunteers with us today, and um, we're going to be meeting with them and finding out more about what it's like to be a volunteer. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, we realize that it has been a very difficult time uh, during this last year. Um, and we hope that everyone is healthy and safe. Um, please know that we, the Alzheimer's Association is here for you 24-7, 365. Um, please call our helpline. It is 800-272-3900. <laughs> Uh, we are always available to answer your questions, lean on for support. Please, please, please call us. Um, once again, uh, I am Jennifer Tinklenberg, and we're celebrating National Volunteer Week. We have some um, wonderful volunteers here with us today, and we wanted to highlight the amazing work that they do and hopefully uh, get a few people out there to come join us and be a become a volunteer. So uh, let me let them introduce themselves, and we'll start with uh, you, Tessie, who is it's staff and not a volunteer. <laughs> That's okay. So nice to see um, um, you, Jenny, and the rest of the, the group here today. Um, thank you so much. My name is Tessie Calajaris, and I'm the Volunteer and Community Engagement Manager for the Northern California and Northern Nevada chapter. I've been a staff member with the association celebrating my 13th year this coming June. Thank you. Wow. Perfect. And then Michelle? Thanks, Jennifer. Um, hello, everybody out there. My name is Michelle McKino. I am a proud member of the board, chapter board for the Northern California and Northern Nevada chapter. Um, our I was a caregiver for our father who had Parkinson's and dementia. And sadly, I have a number of friends with spouses and loved ones with Alzheimer's. And it's really important for me to be able to, to volunteer with this organization. Hi, everyone. My name is Millette Koo. I am the proud co-chair for the San Francisco Walk to End Alzheimer's. I'm also proudly serving my employer, Genentech, as a team captain for the SF Walk. I am deeply and profoundly connected to the disease, um, similar to uh, the previous volunteer mentioned uh, that her connection is to her father. My father had suffered from uh, a rare case of dementia for over eight years, and um, that um, moved me and my family to become more involved. I have a deep passion and, and compassion for those who suffer from the illness and for caregivers such as myself, who um, sometimes need an extra support, a lending hand, and, and um, someone to also speak to. Thank you for letting me be on part of the panel today. Thank you. And Rosalind? Good, Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rosalind Garner. I want to welcome everyone to share with us. I am an ambassador with the Alzheimer's Association. I've been in healthcare over 20 years, and my bonus grandmother suffered from Alzheimer's. She was undiagnosed. That led me to become more um, associated with the Alzheimer's Association. I've been doing walks with the Alzheimer's Association prior to her being undiagnosed. I've been walking since the walks have been on Treasure Island. I continue to do those walks with the Alzheimer's Association. I've been working in healthcare over 20 years, as I've mentioned. I've worked in skilled nursing, memory care, assisted living. I continue to do that. I welcome you and want you to participate today and share with us and join the Alzheimer's Association. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, if you're just joining us, it's National Volunteer Week, and we are celebrating some of our amazing volunteers. Um, so, Michelle, why don't you start us off? What Can you tell me what your favorite part of being a volunteer is? You know, that's kind of a hard question to answer because I actually love all the different things. Um, but I would say my my participation as a member of the board has really led me to, to uh, understand the association mission more, to understand where I can contribute. Um, I recently retired after 33 years from San Mateo County Health and worked with older adults as a music therapist and then a program manager for the 
um, area agency on aging and I was looking for a way to give back to the community. I knew uh, I had worked with the Alzheimer's Association and knew it was such a stellar organization. I was really happy to reconnect. Um, as a board member, you know, the learning opportunities, number one, are immense um, and really invaluable to, to fuel the work that we do. Um, and it also gives me an opportunity of, to apply work experience and collaborate with community uh, leaders. Um, I also am the state champion for one of California's newest senators, Josh Becker, and totally was a steep learning curve for me because I hadn't done advocacy before. But the association is just right there with you the whole way as a volunteer teaching teaching what's appropriate, how do you do things, um, and just if I ever have a question, I know I can just reach out and they're right there in a super timely ma manner. And just as a board member, I'm so proud of that work. I'm also starting to, starting, I'm actually finishing my training as a community educator, which I did a lot of in my work. And I really love the contact with the different groups and it's such an opportunity to, to speak of all the learning that I've gained as um, a board member and a volunteer. And just, it's, it's been great. And be able to also participate in the signature fundraising events like the walk and Memories in the Making and the Longest Day and the other really stellar events that the association puts on. Rosalyn, what about you, favorite part? My favorite part about participating with, the, participating with the association, you have the support groups, you meet with your legislators, please everyone get to know your legislators on the federal level, the state level, the local level. You can go and do letter writing campaigns. You can get to know what bills are being presented to support the, um, to support caregivers and um, your physicians that, um, so that your, your family members can be properly diagnosed. Um, also, we have done recently a day at the Capitol. I just did one. I participated with the um, Alpha Kappa Alpha Association. I am a member and I participated with my team. And with that, you can participate with research and make sure that your loved ones are becoming, getting properly diagnosed, that your primary care physicians um, have the tools and resources that they need to make sure that your loved ones are getting um, properly diagnosed. Also, another part that I really enjoy is the care and compassion that you get. When you hear the different stories that come from the people, not just people that are caregivers, but you get to talk to people that are early diagnosed, they can still share the stories that they have been with from being a caregiver, but also the lives that they are changing from losing their keys, um, finding their way through the process. The last year, we were still able to be in person and we had someone stand up and present the Alzheimer's Association is able to bring us together so we can be taught how to care for each other as one another and being giving that care and compassion. It touches our hearts and you can get that support from the Alzheimer's Association. So please understand we are here to help. Yeah, definitely. And then Millette, I know that you, um, you started off as a, just a team captain and then you expanded it yeah. to become even more of a, like involved in the organization. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Sure, absolutely. Um, we have a very good, strong, united uh, community within my uh, current employer at Genentech. Um, they have been walking for the SF walk or fundraising for the SF walk for over 14 years. But I took it upon myself to challenge myself and, and get a little bit more involved beyond just of my employer's um, fundraising efforts. Um, and that's to bridge the gap of, I, I work for a phenomenal organization that looks to find um, hopefully one day a cure 
or treatment for Alzheimer's. But even beyond that, I have a digital marketing background. And therefore, I wanted to see um, where I could bridge a gap or I could um, essentially find additional opportunities to connect both the science um, part of my life the uh, deep passion I have for the cause and the mission of Alzheimer's Association, and last but not least, build on the skill, something to what M Michelle had mentioned earlier, which is taking everything that we know and understand and what we love and bridging that, um, those pieces together. So for me, I'm on a constant trajectory of learning more, just like Michelle said, uh, but more importantly, uh, for my, for my, to speak on behalf of like what I know now, what um, uh, deeply affects me or resonates with me, what marketing channels and opportunities can have a profound and lasting impact and actually encourage folks to take action. Um, uh, you know, I know that sometimes the disease, like any other illness, um, has stigmas associated with it. You know, folks within our own um, organization, sometimes you'll, you'll only find out that the peer that you've been working with um, has been a caregiver for many years and, and struggles. You don't know that until we speak up and become more um, vocal about what our day-to-day -day personal challenges are on top of who do we work for, what is the organization um, trying to do, and what is their mission statement? Does it, does it reach you know, the people that within our own local communities? Does it reach um, what is important to us? Um, I know that during the time of 2020, for example, there were a lot of social issues that became um, at the forefront of everyone's mind. I started to really do a deep, um, you know, uh, uh, look into what's important to me. What does diversity and inclusion mean to me? How does this then, um, uh, how do people within my organization at work take action upon these kind of things? And then um, how does the Alzheimer's Association take action? And how do they view things? Again, just bringing and tying everything together, ensuring that we're not looking at things in a small bubble, but looking um, beyond our personal um, issues and taking care of the community. So there's a lot there to unpack, but I will say, um, Jenny, that I truly enjoy being at the intersection of all these things and then um, one by one, encouraging others to take action, to be more vocal. Definitely. I love that. Uh so, so Michelle, how do you think that your, your time spent on the board has changed you? You know, I have to say that I found it in the beginning um, kind of intimidating, kind of challenging. The board members, so many are just leaders in their field, have done so much, and certainly those that have been on the board for a while just know so much and they're so resourceful. And I, that's one thing I love about it. You know, we're still doing Zoom board meetings. I'm, as you all know and experience, you miss that contact. I mean, Zoom's lovely, here we are, and Facebook Live, but um, I miss that. But I would say, um, it's really encouraged me to get off my retirement butt and get involved, you know? It was great to be able to take some time to just chill after all those years working in county health. And then I realized, boy, do I miss it. I miss that engagement. I miss the learning. I miss the support of colleagues. And, and I, that's something, those are things that I really have gained from being on the board and I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, so like Mil Millette, um, you work full time, obviously, as you've mentioned, how do you find the time between like Michelle's retired? So, you know, you're, you're not like, how do you, how do you find the time? Candidly, I, I make the time just like we all do make the time for our self care for our families. I don't have children, but I would expect that would add more time um, should I have children. I, I make the time. I, I frankly um, want to ensure that uh, the work that I do is rewarding, again, tying it back to uh, the intersection of all that we do. I want to make sure the work that I'm doing is rewarding. And then equally, I want to take care of myself mentally and physically. If it's a 15-minute walk outside to take care of my you know, physical recharging, the Alzheimer's Association, and more importantly, working with wonderful people like you um, in my volunteer work, recharges me both spiritually and mentally. I, I dedicate 
um, a good portion of my time as much as I can to, to do um, tangible work for the Alzheimer's Association, but also mentally, I'm always thinking about it. All right. What about you, Rosalyn? How do you find the time to do Alzheimer's work? You know, it's in my heart, giving back. And I don't think I would have it any other way. You know, yesterday, I'll just share a quick story. My brother is also volunteering with the hospice agency. And I told him that my bonus grandmother is shedding tears up there because it was also recorded and happy. It is in our family to give back because I sent him pictures of her, him and her uh, together. And it's in our blood, our DNA to just give back. We could not work in a professional world if we did not give back. We have to give balance. So you have to find your niche. It's care and compassion. You know, it's part of our blessings that we have to give back. And so you have to go and, you know, find that balance to give back. You know, just like taking your daily bath and your daily shower, when you go get a massage, you know, here it is, you have to give back. You go and find it in your heart to give back to the Alzheimer's Association. If you are a true caregiver, you will find that moment in time to say, I'm going to give back to someone else. And I have been caregiving, to be frankly honest, since I was 12 years old. There was a lady across the street from my house who was an amputee, and I used to help her. So it's in my heart to give back. I love Alzheimer's and Association. And like I say, I serve on two committees as an AKA and in the Stockton area. So I will always find time to do it. And even if it means that I can't do something else to give back, I will continue to do it. So we appreciate that. <laughs> I agree. The, I like the applause. That's great. Um, so what? So what do you feel like your Rosalind? What? Um, what do you feel like your impact on the community is by doing your volunteer work? What do you think that you're giving back? So I think that people can see the glow. I actually was in Walgreens today, to be frankly honest, and a lady walked up to me and gave me a bouquet of flowers. Um, and so just oh. the glow, the aura, you know, it will resonate with you. Um, people see what you are doing. They hear what you are doing. Um, if you just speak about it, um, people know that you will continue to give of yourself um, and your blessings will come. You don't have to even speak about it sometimes. I was going to get a passport photo <laughs> and she just walked up to me and gave me a bouquet of flowers. So that's the impact in the community, sharing your resources. Um, sometimes people don't even know where to go to get the resources, to be frankly honest. Um, um, you, they have the Alzheimer's Association's website have toolkits to put together that you can access. Sometimes the, you can go to a medical doctor and they don't even know that you can tap into the Alzheimer's Association and the list and the laundry list of resources that you can access is right at your back door. The support groups you can access is right there. You will be pulling out your hair saying, I don't know where to go. I had a family and this is a true story. Um, the, the loved one was in her young, she was early, um, late 50s, early 60s, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And this lady can, when I say can outrun a 12 year old, she could outrun a 12 year old. And the husband was at his wit's end and did not know what to do. And we got the support. We got her to the proper place that she needed to go. The Alzheimer's Association, I was working in the facility um, and she, we need, we had to wrap our arms and get the tools and resources, but also the family needed support, you know? And so, um, that is what the Alzheimer's Association can do for you. Great. So that's the impact on the community. Yeah. It sounds like it. Uh, I love that. Like, I love that people are just giving you flowers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because is, you have such a glow. Yeah. I love it. Um, that's great. And, you know, I think in the community, if I've had a t-shirt on from walk or, or something, invariably, 
someone will come up to me and say, oh, you know, I did walk or my family member, do you know where I can get information? So many people are, are hungry and really need that connection. And they, they're not sure where to go. But I am, but I really am every, whether I'm just going for a walk in the neighborhood or shopping, like, you know, no one's given me flowers yet, but there's always <laughs> hope. <laughs> but people ask questions and they really need the information that, and, and resources that the association offers to the world. Yeah. So, uh, so Michelle, what, what would you tell somebody who is thinking about becoming a volunteer? Like, well, how would you convince them to join the Alzheimer's Association? Uh, well, I did think about that a lot. And <laughs> I volunteered with a number of organizations and I have to say, um, I'm sort of repeating myself, but the support that volunteers receive from other senior, um, you know, leadership volunteers and staff makes all the difference and the tools are available. Um, it, the activities are felt deeply, but they're also fun. They're invigorating, um, they're emotional. And I know that they help fight, uh, help with the onward fight of finding a, a cure hopefully and maybe some treatment before we get to the cure. But um, there's lots, so many different ways, you know, um, when I just even think about my own experience on the board, but also on committees, on advocacy, going up to Sacramento, like you all were talking about, and um, just there's, there's, you know, there's not just one way to volunteer. And I think that is really beneficial for volunteers, but it's a great organization to volunteer with. Great. Jenny, I wanted um, to just kind of piggyback on Michelle's um, um, comments and then Rosalind, how you sort of referenced the website and having a shopping list of options and, and information available. There, you know, there's volunteer opportunities that we offer that kind of capture people's backgrounds and interests and skills and compassion and of time availability. Um, you know, Michelle touched on um, the work that she kind of identified um, in, in our community education, our speakers um, outlet there. There's outreach work in connecting with members and community partners in the community. If planning committees and events is your thing, Millette, you mentioned um, and our walks to end Alzheimer's, but we've got opportunities for the longest day. Um, we've got an, an, a gala that we've just um, Created. It was our inaugural event um, this past March, a bright night gala. There's opportunities for people to get involved in that regards, as well as advocacy and public policy. So it, we've got a little bit of something for everyone. And, you know, I'm just humbled that I'm surrounded by the three of you here that represent the Greater Alzheimer's Association pool of volunteers that really bring their talents, their passions, their time to us. And we figure out ways to keep you for as long as we can keep you. Um, that's really sort of the goal. Um, and we've got volunteers that have been committed in volunteering with us for, for decades. So from me to you, I thank you um, for mm. the work that you do. Tessie, now is there, um, so I realize that we have three women on our call today, but can you be a man or and volunteer? Do we have, <laughs> Absolutely. Do we have equal opportunity? We have <laughs> equal opportunities, not only in gender, but in age. And so if you've got an opportunity um, as a parent or someone that has um, young, young adults that are interested in volunteering, we've got opportunities that range in gamut for, for students um, and young volunteers. For men, for, you know, we, I don't necessarily think we have volunteer opportunities for pets, but if we were to track pets in our, in our space, we would have some volunteer pets um, that have made their way um, in our social media. Um, so, yes. Great, yes. great. So then, Tessie, where, if somebody were interested in volunteering, how would they get involved? 
Thanks for that question. I've been dying to direct people. So <laughs> our website is our place to go. It's ALZ slash NorCal slash volunteer. Um, you will find the selection of items, that are the places that to volunteer there. Um, and then there's the opportunity for you to actually physically apply. So there's an apply now button that actually gets you to me. And then from me, it'll get you to my colleagues um, and then get you engaged in the work that we do. Great. So that's alz.org slash NorCal slash volunteer, right? That's correct. Great. Okay, good. <laughs> A little long, but I think we can yeah. handle it. Yeah. Uh, it's there. We'll find it. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank my amazing volunteers for being here today and being on this call <laughs> um, and taking the time to talk to us about how much fun it is to be a volunteer. So um, thank you all so much for joining us and we will see you next time on our Facebook Live. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye.